All right, guys. Okay, we are live. Okay, if you can hear my voice, please let me know what did you have for dinner. All right, because we kind of way past the dinner time. I hope you guys had dinner, or if you had, you haven't had your dinner, maybe you can enjoy your dinner while, uh, yeah, learning from this very very interesting insights and interview that we are going to do it later. All right, very soon that I'm going to invite a very special uh guest to come out. Okay, where he can actually share with us exactly how he actually used options to accelerate his return. He actually went through a very interesting journey, and definitely there are a lot of investment lessons uh for us to learn from. All right. Wow. What do you guys have? Okay. Kongwa had burger. Okay. What's lot lot? <laughs> like a lot lot. I don't know what's lot lot. Okay. James had. Uh, hi, James. Good to see you. All right. So I can I can see that all of you are able to hear my voice. Okay. Let 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 me know what do you have for dinner. I had a very good meal because tomorrow is National Day for Singapore. So today we had a we have to have a very good meal. Then tomorrow we continue to face. Ha. Oh, Odis, Odis had carbonara. Okay, I miss, I miss carbonara from uh from Italy. It's so good. Maggie, me, hi, Kelvin, good to see you. Hi, everybody. Now, without further ado, let's introduce our official guest to come out today, and he is none other than the Safe Investor. Hi, Safe Investor. Hi, Chloe. Hi, everyone. Okay, I make sure. I think my sound has no problem, right? If you can hear me, type H in the chat. Okay, type H in the chat if you can hear me. Because I, I had can some problems. I can okay, hear cool, it loud. Okay, cool. I hope everyone here. can hear me. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. wow! We even have a we even have an audience from from Ireland. Sarah is oh, like wow. having oh, my gosh. right now. Wow. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. Good to see mm -hmm. every single one of you. Now, I believe like right now, all of us are like pretty pretty curious uh, because Ken he actually started investing. Maybe later Ken can share with us uh, when do you start investing and like like his journey definitely started with a smaller portfolio because you can see that he's relatively young but then over time he used the power of options to compound to right now more than a six-figure portfolio but definitely this is a, not an overnight success there's like a true years of uh, building his portfolio as well and using options to accelerate his return and one thing that i think he's pretty good at is he actually has able to catch the bottom multiple times is that right ken yes correct so if you have attended OMI, I think most of you are from OMI courses, you will know how OMI teaches options in technical analysis. I actually got the idea from the OMI course. Yeah. I see. Um, okay, okay. So how many of you are excited to learn Ken's secret, how he catch the bottom as well? If you're excited, type E in the chat, all right? So later on, I will also get him to share exactly how he does it and uh, how you can do it too, especially if you have learn from OMI, then you will definitely know what exactly is he saying later, right? But before that, I would just want to really just get this ball rolling in terms of like exactly how his investment journey gets started. Like maybe you can share with us, Ken, like how, when did you get started investing and what inspired you to start back then? Okay, okay. All right, so here's my story. Um, this true story and I hope this will inspire some of you. So actually, I started investing right after college. And the first thing that I touched was Forex trading. For those who don't know what Forex trading is about, it's basically a tool with leverage. And you can actually use that leverage to make a lot of money. Or at the same time, you can lose a lot of money. So at that time, I was actually doing customer service in a Forex trading company. So... Ooh. The first thing that I learned was actually technical analysis. I didn't learn any valuations. I didn't learn any mindset skills. I didn't read anything about Warren Buffett or options or anything crypto, whatever. Um, the only thing that I looked at, the first thing I started was technical analysis, right? I was looking at the charts day and night. I was trying to catch the bottom. I was also trying to, to catch the top. And um, the, I mean, I, did make some money but then after one or two years if you made one mistake if you want made one mistake on forex trading for example if you forget your stop loss if you get too greedy you actually lose a lot of money because forex trading is wow. like the the analogy is like you bring let's say you go to a casino you bring in a thousand dollars right and then for each table when you go play in the casino you put down a hundred dollars to, to bet 
But with forex trading, if done if done incorrectly, if done without stop losses or, or wrongly, you can with that one hundred dollar you can lose a thousand dollars. Okay, if you don't know how to do it correctly. So at that time, I didn't have a mentor to guide me. So I did that for a few years, and then uh, I, in the end, I gave up because I feel like there there's just too much time. There's you have to spend a lot, a lot of effort on guessing a trend, looking at charts, setting your stop losses, to setting your uh, your take profit. So I, I think more, maybe some of you have have this kind of yeah, experience. Maybe, right? maybe we can also ask the audience how many of you actually have uh, dabbled in forex before, and then you actually <laughs> didn't have a good experience. Maybe you can tie uh, me in the chat. And actually, this is exactly what I heard from uh, some of my other friends as well, who actually used to do all forex. And like what you said, like he can be winning all the time, and then just one single mistake wipe out all the profits, and in fact incur more losses, and that actually make him stop eventually. Um, uh, oh wow, we have uh, one person have this. Oh, uh, okay, author SO have a nightmare. So that's why you kind of understand that Forex is not for you, is it? Then that's when you started to learn investing, like stocks, options. It, yeah, so so I was very lucky. I had a, a trainer, so he was a friend of a friend. I had a trainer, he said, hey, you know, like, he said, um, hey, you know, you're, you're spending so much time on Forex trading and then you actually didn't even make money at all. And then there was another story. So actually, why I wanted to make money was because I went to uh, Australia and then I really liked this girl. Uh, I was trying to confess to her, blah, blah, blah. And then she actually said something along the lines, oh, because you know, you're too young, you just graduated from university and you had no money. But he, she, she didn't say that straight out, but she's like, she implied it. She implied that you're too young, you just got started, whatever. So I knew what that meant, right? So then. At that time, I knew that I couldn't just always spend time on working. I had to find another way to to make money. So, so that's why I, I like I did forex for for a few years, but then eventually I just gave up. So, but then I I met my mentor, and he actually taught me the basics of investing, which is always finding um always finding value appreciation. And either you only look for two things, which is value appreciation or cash flow. If you think about any investing in the world out there, if it's not value, if it's not like value seeking or value appreciation, um, it's probably more like trading. So, so mm-hmm. that's the very, very important concept that he actually taught me. So, I know some of your crypto traders are there, even myself right now. I'm trading crypto, but then actually, there's another true story. So, like a few weeks ago. There was a crypto a few months ago there was actually a crypto crash and then i really really touched crypto so that's how i kind of avoided that huge crash i never touched ethereum and bitcoin when it was high so i thought like hey you know i'm i'm, I'm doing value investing on crypto i want to do value seeking i want to find what's the most valuable coin and buy when it's cheap and wait for it to go back up but then i found out that after like right now that it's it's a bull run the cryptocurrency right now but then i found that I actually i got out but then I don't know. I, I made money, right? I made money. But then actually, I don't know if the if the crypto is gonna go up more, or it's gonna go sideways, or or it's gonna go down. It's it's not like the stock market. So mm. this this re- keeps on reminding me. Like my mentor keeps on saying, "Hey, you know, you have to look for value appreciation, value appreciation, value appreciation. There, if you don't have value appreciation, he told me not to touch it. You know. So so that's like that is one of the most important lessons I, I learned from my mentor." All right. While well, while well, later we ask Ken, what does he mean by value appreciation? Maybe the audience here can also make a guess. You know, to you, what does value appreciation actually mean? Uh, and and then we can also get Ken to share his insights and what he learned from his mentor. What do what does he mean by value appreciation? And how does it help him? Uh, to improve his investment results as well. And another another thing is if you are if you are like like an, another reason why you should get started investing, that's the power of love. So you can see that <laughs> because of love, he he decided to start to get started investing. All right. So uh, while waiting for people to uh, explain what do they mean by value appreciation, maybe you can explain to us a little bit what do you mean by that. <clears throat> okay. So. Yeah. Um, so the thing about if you if you um, some of you already so some of you maybe already in my course or whatever. Um, so if you think about any investing in the world, stocks, real estate, crypto, gold, bonds, um, what else like cars, antique <coughs> paintings, whatever, NFTs, metaverse. The 
the thing about investing is is actually you're buying quality assets. It can be anything, it can be a house, a car, whatever. And you're waiting, and this is the core concept of value investing. You're waiting for valuable things to drop to a fair price or a very, very cheap price, and you're buying it right there. So this is the power of value investing. Once you learn this, you can actually invest in anything. Now, what I mean by value appreciation is that you need to see what contributes value to your, your asset. Why are people using Apple phones? Why are people using Tesla cars? Why are people using Bitcoin or Ethereum? Or why are people buying this, this property right here? What can this property do? Why will people, why are people willing to pay more money to buy the property? So that's value appreciation. <clears throat> and this is the hardest thing to look into. Um, even, even if let's say you look at Alibaba, um, before the Alibaba crash, right? You do see the EPS growth. You do see the revenue increase, the cash flow, everything was going up. But then right now, after like recently, after I think one or two years, you actually do kind of see the EPS or the revenue decrease. So then the real question is, is that value depreciation or is that value appreciation? So, so that is the, the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing. But once you get it, you get it. For example, like if you look at Ethereum, you look at S&P 500, you know that it's going, it's going to go back up. And that's how, you know, you know that, that's how I use my strategy around that. I see. So, so uh, you guys can see that as an investor, we need to constantly be really be very, you know, tune into things happening around us, right? Like be very sensitive and be actually very curious about uh, what makes a company great. So can everybody type uh, curious in the chat? I think it's like as an investor, you cannot just invest and you forget, right? You really have to be constantly curious, constantly stay up to date in terms of what's happening around you. Observe what are people doing, right? What are you doing? What are you using? So that you can constantly see is any value in uh, holding onto a business or e even buying some more. Right. So maybe Ken, you can share with us a little bit in terms of like uh, just now you said like this is one of the most difficult thing in terms of understanding value appreciation. So apart from that, like what kind of experience or like what kind of difficulties do you face, um, especially during your initial few years of investing or even right now? <clears throat> so the thing about value appreciation, why it's so hard is because if you've been in investing for a while, you will see a lot of different companies they were good but then they go down then they'll go they go bust look think about nokia yahoo uh nike still fine uh what's the other one um codec they're, they're they, they were great they were famous and look at uh, also ibm also intel right now even even if like you look at intel right now it's undervalued it's 100 percent undervalued but it, the thing is about like it, they're not growing that much but i mean they 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 pay good dividends so that's the second part which is the cash flow but it, it's all about that um actually one of the difficulties actually i actually bought baba alibaba and i sold it like i actually sold it because i i saw the value appreciation in, in baba and then i know that china was getting stronger and stronger i even bought 10 cent before i know china was getting stronger and stronger and stronger but i, I remember there was like that one time because i'm from taiwan and my mom asked me hey you know like i've never used baba before but i've always been using us products and i thought about that for a very very long time and i was like yeah hey mom like you're, you're right because Everything we use, quality stuff, not like the cheap stuff, the real quality stuff, the, the stuff that we're willing to pay more money to are all from the U.S. So, so that was a time when I decided to trade off my Alibaba for other U.S. companies. And that was a hard decision because you look at all the financial reports, the statements, everything was still good. But the stock price was just down. And you think long term where will Alibaba be in the next five or 10 years with Jack Ma gone? And I don't know. So I, I'm not saying that it won't go up. His answer is just that I don't know. So when you don't know, right, according to Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger, just don't buy it, buy something else that you know. So so, so I think like investing or buying into your stocks, inc even including crypto, you're always constantly asking yourself, where will this thing go in the future? Will more people use it? Look at Ripple. Look at uh, Cardano, 
look at other whatever stocks that were famous before arc fund right now arc fund to the bottom zoom shot up came all the way down to the bottom so it, it's always about that because when we're investing we're, we're really constantly thinking about the future what's going to happen to this company do you have enough knowledge to understand the, the company so this is the real difficult part than just reading the financial financial reports Hmm. So like how, like, like what you said, right? Like it's not something that's so easy, not apart from just reading financial reports, right? So what do you do um, or like, so that you can have a better sense of what kind of companies that does it have a future or what? All right. Very good question. So let's say, you know, like it really depends on what your, your, what you want so for example i had a conversation with my friend he said hey you know i'm getting like i'm doing trading on cryptocurrency this was before the cryptocurrency crash and then he said hey you know i'm getting like 10 20 percent on my cryptocurrency da, 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 da. the currency was going was going up if bitcoin ethereum to whatever thousand and then um i had a, another discussion with my mentor because he's he's another person who didn't touch crypto okay he didn't touch crypto before the crash he said hey you know hey can you you need to like understand that what they're doing is trading they're not really really investing they okay so most people they look at indicators uh they try to you know see an uptrend or see a downtrend and then you, they try to make market or whatever predictions and my mentor said to me they are trading okay there's nothing wrong with trading but are you the person who wants to do trading or are you the person who wants to do investing? So I thought to myself and say, okay, I'm going to be an investor. I'm going to not be a trader. So I simply, before the, before the crypto crash recently, I put my savings into crypto saving, which is like a US dollar saving account. And I was still getting that 10%. And um, I should beat the S&P 500 by just doing saving crypto, like saving my US dollars in the cryptocurrency a savings account and then like recently i had a chat with my other friend and he said uh he lost a lot of money he's holding on to the ethereum holding on to bitcoin and whatever and i said hey you know man like this is you know I, I was very lucky that i had a mentor to just stop me right there to do something stupid or crazy um because you know when the hype was there you don't have any valuation and um you, you'll think to yourself hey you know can i just buy one a small piece even a small piece you have that gambling mindset at the back of your head but i'm very lucky someone pulled me back and that's how i kind of prevented myself from um getting caught in this huge crash okay very and you never know if it's going to go back up yeah you never know if crypto is going to go back up or not but with stock you always know it's going to go back up okay uh, i think that's very interesting when it comes to like because just now you talk about mindset right like as an investor um we all know that you know um it's actually very difficult to to control the emotions and everything. How many of you, maybe the audience here right now, like you feel like, oh, you know, you know the right thing to do, but end up you don't do it because there's emotions that we fear, we agree, you know. How many of you experienced emotions before in, in investing? If you do, uh, maybe you can type E in the chat, right? So how do you control your emotions so that you can um, make better decisions? Uh, yeah, be it, it let's, talk more about like let's say the the stock and options market yeah oh cool okay so okay okay so i think a lot of audience here know about option trading so i'm pretty pretty sure that i don't know maybe some of you your your positions are in a in a loss on options right now you you look at your account and you see holy moly this is 20 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent loss in options but then you have to ask yourself like what are you buying are you buying a business and if you if you attend it all you should know that options is a contract to really actually lock in your buying price so if you have that concept and because let's say you bought an option at let's say apple price at hundred dollars you bought a call option and then um you know the apple price came down to fifty dollars per share your your call option price at that fifty dollars actually becomes cheaper as well so then again, if you if you have that mindset, which is my mentor always tell you, look at the valuation, look at the value, look at the valuation. Is it something that will go back up, or is it something that's going to go flat, or is it something going to go down? Right. I look at Apple shares, 
And I think to myself, you know, I look around the world, I see most people using Apple phones and more. So actually, I bought two more call options when the Apple price came crashing down at the money. So, so this is like this is like you know buying stock. Right? You buy one share um, when it's expensive. You buy one share when it becomes cheaper. Um, you can buy two shares or three shares or, or four shares. So I think the 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 mindset is is the king. And I was just really lucky that I had a mentor to really help me. Oh, so you think like having this accountability at least point you back to the right track, and then at the same time. Um, to you, um, like what else do you do like every day to have that stability in terms of mindset apart from having the mentor? Oh, yeah. okay, apart from having um, so actually, actually, it's actually very, very interesting because okay, my, my mentor coached me for five like more than five years, then he though he, he went away, so so it really comes down to like your own studies. You go and read, like for me, for example, I study like even I, I do stocks, options, crypto, NFT. And you know everything, so it, it's the ability to read and to understand and understand what great investors are thinking, like how Warren Buffett thinks, how Charlie Munger thinks, what is Ray Dalio thinking, what is Michael Burry thinking, what is Kathy Wood thinking. So I kind of don't like Kathy Wood now because um, she's okay. But anyway, not talking about that. Um, so you, you go and look at what other investors are doing. And you can see every investor is different. Ray Dalio actually has a lot of percentage in ETFs. He has a lot of percentage in ETFs. Um, Michael Burry is the guy who does shorting when he, when he ever he sees a hype, whatever hype there was, whatever hype, uh, he shorts the stock, and and that's how he makes the money. And Warren Buffett is the most classic and traditional person of doing value investing. And um, yeah, so so the, the thing about investing is like you, you have to like go and study the mindset of these famous and great investors. That's how you can train your mind to not have that emotion of that, that fear. And how many of you actually dare to buy more two or three weeks ago? If you if you if you buy more, just type N for more in the chat for me. If you dare to buy more, if you didn't really care about catching the volume, you didn't don't really care about the stock market, you, you you only look at the valuation and you just you know you knew this is a good company and then you look at the revenue, look at the, the EPS, and you just bought more. If you had that mindset, then I can say that you know you're you're very you're like you 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 you're a real value investor. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think what Ken is saying that it really boils down boils down to um, focusing on the business itself, like and um, um, appreciating the value of it. Because I I really feel like if you buy a business at a very good price, like for example, what's happening right now, or like what Ken said, like just like maybe two one to two weeks ago, you are really entering the stock market with a high margin of safety. And then when it comes to investing, it's actually just about safety if you protect your downside the upside will take care of itself right this is donald trump saying and then like this is actually so true so so like if you are actually even like in this current market condition what do you think is the uh, like do you think actually it's right time to enter right now <laughs> okay I, I actually had this discussion with someone this morning and um it, it's like right now it's a very, very interesting point because you look at technical analysis, it's hitting the resistance line. But you look at valuation, a lot of quality companies are still undervalued. So like, let's say tonight, I actually don't know if tonight is a good time to buy or not, and I can't predict the price. I only know that it's it was higher than a few weeks before. So I would say that a few weeks a few weeks ago, that was the best time to buy. But right now, you you look at the technical analysis hitting the resistance line, but at the same time, the EMA was crossing each other. So it, it's a kind of indication of, of a bull market. But then can you actually buy it? That's like a very hard question to answer. So um, in my telegram, I always tell people that, hey, you know, like don't try to predict the market. Uh, you always just look at the valuation, look at the valuation. Um, you always buy it when people are, are fearful. And you don't buy when people are greedy and you will do well in the long run. Mm. And I think like uh, what Ken is referring that if you are a little bit 
uh, afraid of the resistance if you are like doing options, like for example, call options because you do have a uh, you know uh, time decay and stuff, and you are afraid. Maybe you can even consider maybe buying some shares. Or uh, what do you think, right? And that's how at least they get their investing journey started, rather than trying to once again time the market, which nobody can time the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I saw some questions. Yep. Okay. Um. Well, maybe you can. Uh, yeah sure oh, uh, why, why not you you let me know which question oh. do you want to ask yeah oh uh, yeah okay okay uh averaging with options you buy the same okay this one you go and ask Pete. if you're all my student go ask Pete. <laughs> this one <laughs> this one this one i kind of had my own answer because because i can't really tell you what to do now because it's you have to you need a very strong mindset to to understand it, it depends on like your stock so Let's say, for example, if I, let's just use S and P five hundred for example, it's like you know the most easiest one, and ninety percent of the time goes up. Um, do buy the same expiry date or buy the next longer expiration date. It okay for me because I always buy the longest. And I always buy the longest because I'm, I want maximum safety. So even though like right now my portfolios, my buy call options did get hit a lot, like it was down a lot, but I bought a two year call option. Like every time, I always buy the two year call option. And that's how like I'm not you know panicking right now and not looking at my portfolio and thinking oh when should I close when should I close so you always buy you always buy the longest one. Hmm. Okay, I think another very good question that it's actually very related to people with smaller portfolio. Like, how did you? If we go back to your journey, right? Like, how did you actually get started growing from you know like started with a four figure to eventually how you grow it to right now? Right. Like, right. Okay. What do you actually do? I, okay, this is a very, very interesting question. So, okay, so guys, so when I started with my portfolio, uh, I've been investing for 10 years. So I, had, I was doing uh, I was doing Forex and then and then there was a time when I was a little bit afraid of the market. So I actually put some money into my mutual fund. Now, I already, I already know how to do stock, like stock picking and all the valuation, everything. So I put some money into mutual funds. Then I went to join uh, Chloe's OMI because I wasn't too sure about options uh, before. So then, okay, guys, this is the most powerful and simple strategy ever. Now, if you attend the OMI, you will know how to use the EMAs. We have the EMA 20, 50, 100, and 200. And th this is a story. This is a very, very true story. Very, very true story. So... There, there was one time in the 2008 crash, there was, uh, was a trade war going on in China, the market plunged. Now, and then the, the Taiwan market also plunged as well. So I was, I was going uh, into the, 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 uh, the market doing some grocery shopping. Then I heard about like, this very, very old grandma. She was talking to her neighbor and said, hey, you know, the, 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 gu piao, the, the stock market crashed. I, I bought some shares of, the index in Taiwan. And I spoke to the grandma I asked, hey grandma, so you know how to invest? And the grandma said, no, I know nothing about investing, but I know that the, S the, the index is gonna go back up and I know that TSM is a strong company. So I know I put some money in TSM, I put some money in the index. And then right now you look at the, the price of the Taiwan index or the price of the of the TSM and she made money. So so after, after that story, um, I was I was doing that with my stocks, but then I did it with options, and it became really really powerful. Because when you use options, you know, you know, let's say you pretend that you attended OMI before, and then you know how to look at the technical indicators, you don't do anything too crazy, and you just wait for like a huge huge crash right now, and you can see the S and P five hundred a few weeks ago, it was actually touching the two hundred EMA. Now you go and trace back, you go and trace back, you, you go and trace back, you look, you use the five year chart or the longest chart. You can see that every time when S and P 500 touches a 200 EMA, it rebounds. Now the question is, will it touch it? No one knows. So the, no one knows, but the thing what you can do is let's say when it didn't touch it, you, you spy, you buy shares. You don't go too crazy. But when it touches it, that's where you you know pull out your big guns. You you can sell a put, buy a call at the same time. Uh, so you, you for example, right, you can sell a long put, you can buy a long call at the same time, or uh, you just buy a long call and hold on to it. And that's how you actually uh, make make money because we know that 
the S and P five hundred or the QQQ、um, compared to individual stocks,、um, they do have a higher chance of going up. So, so that's the, that is the thing that you can kind of bet more heavily into. So,、mm. so yeah. So, so if you don't know about options, right? Make sure you join.、Uh, you know, you get some education. Yeah, you know, maybe,、uh, maybe learn from Chloe or learn from Pete. And、um, yeah, make sure you have you understand what you're doing. So, if you have a smaller portfolio, don't worry.、Uh, I would probably say like a few weeks ago that was the best time to buy.、Um, if you know how to look at the indicators. Uh, otherwise, you can still buy like small, like、um, buy shares, right? Buy shares.、Hmm, yeah, and then just how you were saying that、uh, when it comes to using the the two hundred EMA that you said just now, it was is it on a two a five year chart or is it? A, I I believe you are talking about a five year chart, right? Because it, it actually touched the five year chart, the two hundred EMA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it actually it actually did. So, oh, maybe, maybe then you can、uh, you can share I, screen now. Share screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want this to become too. Okay.、Uh, okay. This, if you already know all of my, right, you will pick this up very fast. If you don't want all of my or option, you know, you learn from Chloe or learn from Pete. So, guys, let me just show you guys this because this is really, really powerful. And、um, let's say you you look at the five year chart of the S and P five hundred, and let me just make this line clear a little bit more. And、um, All right, so hold on. So you look at you look at the chart. You look at this. This is the 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 S and P five hundred. I'm going to take away other indicators. So make sure it's not. So, guys, look at this. This was the ultimate best time for you to use options, right? You can sell a put, sell a buy a call, do whatever you want, right? So that was that that was the best time. Right now, so you know when it touches it, even though it broke it, right? That was in two thousand and twenty. You buy a call option, you hold on to it, and then and then you get out somewhere here when you know the twenty crosses to the fifty, right? Go learn this from OMI.、Uh, you still make money, right? Over here, same thing. Two thousand and nine touches it, touches the the two hundred EMA, go back up. When you see the crash, you you get out, and it happened in two thousand and sixteen. And it happened in 2011.、Um, the the dot com bubble that one, sorry, the housing bubble that was different. But if you just do this every single time with your buy call, you'll make money. It's like you know, it's like it, it's it's a it's literally like a no brainer. It's kind of like the power coupon strategy that Sean talks about, right? So yeah. so yeah, so it's like let's say you're a complete beginner. You just need to understand what is a call option. You can make money. It's it's very very easy. Just just like that. And when you buy the S and P five hundred, you don't really need to worry about the news at all. Yeah, very yeah. simple. Yeah. So so for yourself, is that how you manage to uh you know catch multiple bottoms using these indicators, or how does that go? Yes. So let's say because before that I was using I was doing stocks, but then I found that stocks would have a Okay, stocks are stocks are safer, but if you truly understand value investing, you should buy more when when the company or the S and P five hundred goes down. You should always buy more. It's called like a, a pyramid, a, a, a triangle.、Um, in in China, in Taiwan, we call it 金金字塔型的买法 So you buy more and more. So let's say let's say, and this is where the power of options come in. So let's just pretend that you know you bought shares, shares, shares. When you see the touch of blue line, you go one call option, two call option, three call option, and it goes up. You make money. So, so that's that's and even if, even if right, you, let's say you bought like three call options right here, you close it. Then you're super afraid. You close it somewhere around here, or you close it at the resistance line. You still win. You still make money because because for for buying calls,、um, I kind of like to get out earlier because there's time decay. So I don't really like to hold on to calls. Um, a lot for for a long time, unless I'm in a huge drop, then、I、have to hold on for a, lo a longer time. But so let's just say you, when you see this right here, you buy three, or four, or five call options, and you just get out over here. You don't take too much risk. You don't get too greedy. You don't you know you you don't you don't do that, right? You you can make money very very easy. It's very easy. Yeah.、Hmm. So basically, it's like you you time your entry and you time your exit、um, much more actively when you do. Options to ensure your profits is is that right? Yes. So it, 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 let's just say actually it means that I only do heavy bets 
when it touches the touches the 200 EMA, that's where I go like a lot of options inside. And, mm -hmm. and that's how you can actually, you also reduce your risk and increase your profits at the same time. Because let's just pretend that you buy one call here, you buy you buy a one call here, call option here, a second call option over here, and the third call option over here, you hold on to it right now, you, you're still making money. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I think this investment philosophy is pretty similar to how Charlie Munger, uh, he has been saying, right? Like, like when you see a good opportunities, uh, bet big, right? Like, like don't, don't just, uh, it, this is also what Warren Buffett said, right? Like you don't want to take out a teaspoon when it's downpouring, right? You want to make sure you bring out the whole bucket to catch the, the water, right? Uh, when, when opportunities are here. And, oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He right? had, uh, yeah. Let me, let me, uh, uh, comment on that. Yeah, the the quote, the one, but the most famous quote Warren Buffett said was, "When it rains gold, right? When it's gold, don't use a thimble, but use a bucket. So when yeah. the opportunity comes, definitely, then we go big, right? Go, just go big, and then that's how you grow your portfolio." Okay, I see. So my next question back to um, your journey is like, um you know, like going through all this, you know, volatility, different kind of crisis. Um, like to you, what do you think is the most important attributes that an investor should cultivate in order to make sure they are able to really, you know, not just, not just, you know, like, because a lot of people will end up giving up because of uh, what happened in the stock market, they lost money. But how do you, um, what kind of things that do you think that they can do to make sure that they actually can survive through, but in fact, actually prosper from that? Like what kind of mindset they need to cultivate? Yeah. Oh, this was okay, another good story to tell. So in one of the crashes, um, in one of the crashes, I, I, I already knew that I had to buy more at the bottom. I already knew that. But then there, in one of the crashes, I actually ended up... Um, spending my cash too quickly so i think it was the i think it was a, the COVID crash um i actually like i started to buy more and more when the market came all the way down so i had to buy more and more and more and even though you know that the stock market is come it's going to come back up you know that because you've been through many kinds of but you just don't see the bottom because you look at your during that COVID crash it broke the 200 ema so I actually doubted myself and like, hey, this never ever happened before because I was always trading on the 200 EMA and um, it broke the 200 EMA. And I was like, holy shit, like if, if the market doesn't go back up, what should I do? So then it, then it, it goes, it, then the, the, I had, the thing I had to reflect was, was I, uh, was I buying the was I buying too frequently? Should I have waited for a 10% drop or 20% drop or even a 30% drop before I buy the second time, the fourth time, the fifth time? And um, it also reminded me that why like uh, savings are important. So this is why I have my crypto savings right now, which uh, there's a part of the money I, I, I put in my USDC savings account, which is, you know, the US dollar account. And, um, yeah, so 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 it, it it makes you think about like even in this crash, right? No one could kind of no. Even though I saw the two hundred EMA, I bought call options, but I, I I I didn't go like buy hundred call options, right? To do that because you never know if it's gonna just drop more. You never you never really know. So the thing about like you need to think about where do you get your cash flow from? Are you getting your cash flow from your dividends, from your crypto savings? from your daily job, from your sell put uh, options or from your business, that's another uh, another very important factor you, you should consider. And if you guys, if you, if you think about a week, a month ago, the news was saying recession was coming. Everyone was saying the market was going to crash more. And people were saying that the Fed, this is the most ridiculous thing, Fed, when Fed announced the interest rate raise the first time, the market came crashing down. Recently, the Fed said that they're going to increase interest rate again. The market went back up. So, you know, it, there's no point of looking or watching at the news. There's no point to 
look at any news at all. And this is what Warren Buffett said. He said, you can't predict the market by reading the, the headline. And even if you look at the Twitter something, there's something going on with Elon Musk and Twitter. Some people, you know, maybe traders or whatever, they're trying to predict an outcome of that company. But if you look at Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger, or, you know, they, they don't care about that. They go and understand what Twitter is doing. Is Twitter a good company? And today, regardless of Elon Musk buying Twitter or not, do you understand the company? Do you like the company? And do you see the future of the company? And we can see that right now, the, the company, there's something wrong with it. So, so, so the thing about, I think being like a really, really solid investor is you really have to think hard. And the most important question that, you know, I always tell my, my followers in my telegram is that you have to understand when to get out because understanding it, even Adam Koo said that, uh, you know, I learned from a lot of investors. Adam Koo said that if you don't know when to get out, then, you know, maybe you shouldn't get in. And then that's like very in line with my philosophy. You, you, let's say even my crypto, right? I got in at the bottom, I made money, but I'm like, right now, I don't know if I should get out because I don't know if Bitcoin, Ethereum, my Solana, my Cardano, my whatever coin, is it going to go up more? Is it going to go back down? I have no idea. I can't mm. do a valuation on crypto. So so that that's a question. Actually, the only coin, one question that you should you should solve is when to get out. If you know when to get out of a business, you know when to buy. So that's like the most important question of all. Mm, I think it's all really boils down to your game plan, right? Your investment game plan that a lot of times people only think about entering, but then if they never think through when to get out, that that means it's not a well thought through game plan. And I can tell that, you know, can he really focus on like the whole investment process is like not just from entering but all the way until when to exit so that he can really plan his strategy whatever positions wisely so i think this is um i also want to ask so far like are you guys learning from this interview if you, you learn and you find it useful can you type learn in the chat all right and uh if it's useful for you guys as well make sure just to help us to share this post you know to to maybe to just just click the share button so that more people can get to benefit from this sharing as well all right so there are some questions coming in from the audience right he's asked okay solo is asking uh do you still hold on if the stock suddenly drop a lot after you buy a call option okay ah very very good question so this, okay so i get asked this a lot and i was actually having this there was one like i was okay so at you know, being an investor, like you always have to be humble and talk to a lot of people and understand what they're thinking. I was talking to this, this, this trader, this trader, and he said, I set a stop loss. So he said, like, if I buy Apple at $100 and Apple dropped to $50, I'm going to cut loss. And then I said to him, man, so, okay, so you're, you're going to cut loss. So it means you're going to sell away your stock, right? And then he said, yeah. And then I said, okay, I'm going to buy your stock. And he said, why, why, am, why are you going to buy my stocks? And he said, because I, I said, because it's so cheap. So, you know, I, it, you know, if you, it, I, I didn't want to buy a hundred dollars, but if you're willing to sell it to me at $50, I want to buy it. Then he froze. He said, wait, 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 let me think about it again. Wait, why am I cutting losses again? And he said, oh, because I'm going to do a stop loss. And I said, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll buy from your stop loss. So the thing about options trading is kind of like the same thing, right? So the, the, the thing about investing is you have to do it before it happens. You have to buy before it goes up. You have to get out before it comes down. You have to buy a put option to protect yourself before it comes down. You have to buy a call option before the price goes up, right? If you if you do it, let's say let's say I, I think a lot of people maybe they missed out on this this uptrend right now, and a lot of people I can I know how you guys feel. You probably feel like you want to get in right now because you missed out on the trend because you missed out at the bottom, and this is where some people lose money. I wouldn't say because I don't know the the thing is it can go up, can go down, but. Most times what I see is that people didn't get in when they were cheap. They see it go up, 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 and they can't hold on to more, hold on to it anymore. They're like, oh shit, I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. They're going to buy in and they lose money. And they, they, because the interesting about stock investing is that whatever, what has happened is already happened. It's not, doesn't mean that's going to happen in the future. What's done, what's dropped has dropped. You don't know if it's going to drop more. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. 
what if it's gone up already has gone up you don't know if it's going to go up more anymore it, it could come coming down so to your question uh, do you still hold on if the stock selling drops a lot after you buy coffee yes i do and it's because i have strong conviction on the call option that i i uh buy on my stock so for example microsoft even though, even though my call option is still still in a, in a drop right now you look at the valuation you look at the whole business model uh i bought more shares bought more options yeah so basically it all boils down to the conviction which is pretty similar to what pete shared during the recent omi that you know during the COVID crash that uh uh, his Amazon call option was losing a lot of more money, like close to 90%, but then he didn't cut loss because to him that this is a business that really makes sense that will continue to to benefit from the from the trend of how people shop online and then eventually it actually recover pretty quickly and in the end his call options actually make money. So it, it all boils down to your conviction, yeah. So, all right, so another stock uh, uh, another uh, uh, Odin is asking a very interesting question. Uh, question in terms of like, do you have top ten companies in your? Okay, all right, guys. Not financial advice, but I'll give you my top ten. Okay, not financial advice, and I'll explain why. Because I okay, so I have I have three sinking layers. Okay, so number one is the mindset. I understand why I'm buying it, when to get out. If I if I can't decide when to get out, I don't even touch the stock. Number two is do your evaluations correctly. If you do your evaluations correctly, then you go into technical analysis. You try to catch the bottom and then you use your options. So I go through these four layers to decide what strategies uh, I want to use. So and these are the 10 stocks that I have gone through. And um, so number one, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, and his holdings inside Bank of America, Coca-Cola, um, Apple already inside, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, uh, what's the other one? American Express. And uh, I kind of, I tried to understand what uh, Kraft Heinz was doing, but then I didn't buy it. So basically the, those are the, the, the 10. Because if you think about who is the greatest investor in the world, it's definitely Warren Buffett. And if you look about, you look at the portfolio and, understand that the, the companies that he has been holding on to for the longest are the four, the Apple, the XP, Bank of America, and Coca-Cola. So, so you know that these companies have been tested and proven to, to profit you know, throughout the entire history. So this is why I'm okay to use um, you know, selling a put or buying a option. Uh, for tech stocks, um, I use Facebook, you guys use Facebook, YouTube, right? Uh, Gmail, Apple phones, Microsoft Office. So so these are the four companies that I think that um, are, are going to last forever. And the most important thing is like, I know when, when to get out. If someday I'm not using Facebook anymore, I'll probably sell my Facebook shares. If I don't watch YouTube anymore or use Google Map anymore, Gmail anymore, or Google search anymore, maybe I'll sell my, my Google shares. Um, I don't buy Amazon because I don't use Amazon. I know it's a great business, the valuation is good, but I just don't buy it because I don't know when to get out. That's, a, that's the only problem. Mm, okay, very interesting. I, I think you also shared a little bit insights of when to get out in terms of, once again, it's from your observation and from your own experience. Like, do you see that, you know, like, like do you continue to use it? Do people around you continue to use it? That kind of gives you more, more clues on when to get out. Is that right? What else do you do to determine when to get out? Yeah, so the thing about like I actually learned this from my mentor, and he said that he said that he, he said a very very important concept to me. He said, "Hey, you know, like most people, when they go and invest, they think about making money, but he said when you go invest, you need to think about it as spending money." And I was confused. I was like, "Wait, what are you talking about?" He said, "When you." buy whatever things right you're spending money it is the things that you acquire um that's either gonna make you or break you so once you have that mindset you think about investing as spending money buying something then you treat your your merchandise your product very carefully and closely so i think the, the thing about it's like it's 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 all in the mindset. And uh, I remember like even Warren Buffett or Sean even said that in his book, he said, 
when you're buying stocks, it's like going to the supermarket to, to go shopping. And as a, as a investor, like I look at stocks every day, I look at some of the companies, um, you, you basically, you're going through a supermarket, you're, you're browsing your products, you're looking for something. And then someday you see this, this huge, huge discount on a bowl of cereal, a piece of chocolate, um, something very good. Then you, you know that, oh, this is something good. I want it. I want it right now. Then that's time for you to, to buy. But you don't want to uh, participate when there's a hype. It means like a, a, a mob can go to $1,000 for whatever reason. That's something you, know, you look at a mob and you think, why is the mob costing $1,000? You would not want to buy it. But in the investing world, people look at whatever thing, like maybe Bitcoin or whatever. They look at, you know, it's so expensive and they want to buy it. So this is weird because in the investing world, when something is cheap, they don't want it. When something is expensive, they want it. So this is why investing is hard. But once you have that mindset, you know, because I was very lucky someone taught that to me. So um, I very rarely participate in any kind of hypes. And that actually protected me from a lot, a lot of uh, crypto crashes market crashes so when you're saying that like uh when it comes to investing become like you are spending when you are spending people generally are more prudent and that's why you feel like if you have this mindset um it kind of really hold you back from spending unnecessarily is that what what you what yeah what you yeah mean? yeah because when you when you think about spending money to buy stocks crypto or whatever you think very hard because you're spending money and and you don't know that if that money is going to give you returns right you right you, you buy bitcoin i don't know if it's going to give me returns you know some okay so some of you know that you you can get some dividends on your bitcoin but if you just buy bitcoin with any without any dividends at all and i i would say like you have to you're kind of like just trading or you don't what are you trying to get? You're trying to get a dividend or getting cash flow or trying to get the value appreciation. If you want value appreciation, then you have to go and understand why this bowl of cereal, this bowl of this, this, uh, this mop, this, this vacuum is so expensive. What is it so valuable? What problems can it solve? Why are people using it? So, mm -hmm. so yeah. I see. Okay. Very interesting. So, um, like some other questions coming in as well. Like, uh, for example, the Li Hing is asking, oh, do you actually have Tesla? <laughs> I do not because I don't drive the car and the valuation is overvalued. So I do not have Tesla. I see. That's clear. All right. So once again, it boils down to whether, so you can see Ken as a safe investor, he always really want to invest in something that he himself can understand and he himself uses, right? And that's why if he doesn't use Tesla, like he doesn't use Amazon, um, he will not touch it because he do not know when to exit. So you can consider uh, adopting this philosophy as well, you know, help you to make better decisions. All right. So I think another very good uh, question from Brian is asking like if, you know, I mean, generally people start with a smaller portfolio, right? What's your advice for uh, them? Okay. Like, do All you right, advise so, them to buy stocks uh, that are, you know, um, okay, cheaper? So, yeah. Okay, so Ryan, so remember, uh, this is not any you know, stock recommendation. I'll just tell you my, my, my true story. So I was trading on QQQ and I was trading on TQQQ. Okay, so it means that... Um, because, Okay, when you when you when you first start, right? When you have a small portfolio, and I don't know if you're if you're in the group coaching up here or, or, or not, but let's just pretend that you don't have a mentor. But okay, let's pretend you had no one to guide you, right? You, you kind of don't want to make, make mistakes. You go for the safest option. So when I first started, um, I was trading on at the S and P five hundred, and I was trading on QQQ because these two are the safest and we know that 90% of the time it's going to go back up. Um, then I got more advanced Then I started to trade on leveraged uh, ETFs like TQQQ and uh, individual stocks. So, but then, so this is a general rule of thumb. You want to go for high predictability instead of high profitability. So let's just say Coinbase right now, we, we look at Coinbase, right? Coinbase has been around for 10 years, right? maybe, maybe not, maybe five, I don't know, maybe five or six years. And it's the first 
exchange to go public. Uh, Binance, is, Binance is not in public. So Coinbase is the new company and it's the first company. And you can see that one night it can go up 10%, 20%. But then it has high profitability, but low predictability. So this means that if you buy a call option, it crashes 10, 20, 50%. You don't know if it's going to, you do not know if it's going to go back up. But if you always aim for high probability, like ETF or any kind of ETF, right? Because I remember Chloe has a course on ETF, right? You, you use it on your ETFs, even though your returns are a little bit lower, but then you can still, you do it consistently, you increase your win rate. So I've been using it on the uh, SPY, QQQ, and TQQQ. Okay, so so that, that's how I used it. But um, if you want to learn more, right, definitely <laughs> go and uh, learn from OMI. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think uh, uh, I think what you said just now is so. I think there's a lot of wisdom in terms of focus, not just not that profitability, but the predictability. And if if you just focus doing that, actually, most of the time you will actually end up buying good businesses because you usually good businesses are very predictable, and and that also can prevent uh investors facing you know like huge losses because um investing in hype stocks that are actually very, very profitable, could be, it sounds very profitable, but not very predictable after all, right? And I think Weijie was saying that, oh, Tesla actually has value. Uh, maybe you do not understand. Uh, and I think it totally, it's it, it's true, right? Like we don't have to understand every single thing that, that um, you know, just like Warren Buffett, he also doesn't invest in Tesla, but doesn't mean that Tesla is not a good company. For me, yeah. I actually, I also invest in Tesla. And I went to do research on it, and I believe in the value of it, even though I yeah. personally do not have I, a test. I, I, <laughs> I remember there's a quote from Warren Buffett, and I totally understand. Like, you know, maybe I, I, that, that is it, because I don't understand the value, and I can't understand the value, so that's why I'm not touching it. So Warren Buffett said that he regretted not buying Google. He regretted not buying Microsoft. He simply said that because we're just too dumb to make didn't make the decision. He regretted selling out Disney. And he said that, you know, it's like there are things that you look at it, you think you understand. After a while, you, you think that you understand, but you actually do not understand. So, you know, it, it, if you understand the value, go ahead. All right? I can't say you're wrong, but definitely then go ahead. And if you think you understand the value, go understand. But I don't understand. I do not know when to get out. I don't have a Tesla car. I'm not going to buy it. Mm, yeah so different investors are different just like what ken said there are so many ways of investing you have to as long as you are comfortable with your own way of investing and, and it gives you the consistency i think by all means um strengthen your principle on that all right so because it's almost coming to an hour i just want to ask a few more questions all right because at the end of the day i, I want to compile all this wisdom from different investors into my own book that I want to publish it this year. Oh my God, so stressed right now. Okay, I better start working on it. So that's why I'm just compiling all this wisdom so that I can put it in a book and 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 give it to all of you to read uh, at the same time. So Ken, if you can turn back time, right? Like 10 years ago, for example, what's the thing that you think that you should do and you should, you will not do to your younger self? I actually, okay, this is like, I regret it not meeting my mentor because I was doing like forex trading and it was like so stressful. But today you make a thousand dollars, tomorrow you lose five hundred dollars, you know, next day you make two thousand dollars, next day you lose, you know, I don't know. It's like it's just crazy. And there was just so much stress at that time. And even though you set the stock loss or the take profit, but it's like there's no there's no true value in for trading, and I wish that I had learned the the term the the core concept from my mentor, which is value seeking or cash flow. If it if like if you buy a house, you do your crypto saving, you get your cash flow. Uh, you rent you rent out your house, you get some cash flow. You lend something out, like even bonds. The bonds give you cash flow. Um, if, if you're doing whatever crypto trading, whatever, then you really need to think about what is the value of the coin, the token, the stock, the, the real estate, the car, the painting. And, and, and I wish I didn't waste so much time on trading 
and you know losing money but actually that it it kind of helped me actually because i knew that technical analysis only is like 60 to 80 percent accuracy so yeah. when i learned value investing for my mentor i totally get it and and i totally understand why value seeking is so important than just uh trading on stocks and crypto or, or forex yeah i see so it once again it boils down to um getting yourself on the right track sooner and then ken will have actually you know uh prevented himself from you know dabbling in the forest market for so long and actually wasted quite a lot of time but once again, i think there's no uh there's no mistakes it's only like lesson learned and then he learned from this and actually anchor him to be an even stronger investor so this is what you will tell yourself not to do then how about what to do then what to do uh, um okay so when you are starting off when you're starting off right it is actually i think it's okay i was lucky because i had someone teach me but if you if you if you're like a person who doesn't like to read a ton of books i think you should like you know follow chloe or follow pete or sean or even adam ku or you find you find an investor that you like and you go and study that person it can be charlie munger or or uh warren buffett right? you have to find a person to to model and you, you need to think about what is his philosophy what is his philosophy talking about and there are different different philosophies and my mentor he taught me that hey you know like you know he he he, he really loves warren buffett so he taught me that hey you know don't lose money don't lose money don't lose money and that's why i call myself or name myself to remind myself that hey you know i'm a safe investor I always look for safety in whatever I buy. So my recommendation is that if you, you have to go and find someone to, for starters, right? You have to go and find someone, understand their philosophy, understand what they're doing and you learn from them. And that's going to give you the quickest results. Hmm, I see. I, I think Yvonne is very curious. Who is your mentor? Oh yeah, he's a, he's a friend of a friend, but uh, he's, he's actually from Taiwan. He's not from Singapore. I see. Yeah. So you have to go all the way to Taiwan to find this <laughs> mentor, you want. All right. So uh, before we wrap up this interview, right, maybe we can, uh, can you share with us like maybe three key advice um, that you will give to investors, right? Be it they're beginners or they're on the way, you know, what are the three key advice that you will give? Okay. So three advice. So if, if you are a beginner, right? And um, let's say, let's just pretend you don't have a mentor. Uh, I would say definitely start from the S&P 500 or the, or the index fund. And even Warren Buffett says that he has his reasons. You know, he, he did a bet against the hedge funds for a 10 year bet. No hedge fund can beat him by him just buying the S&P 500. If you use your call options or your put options on the S&P 500, then you have a very high winning chance. Okay, for, for beginners. Now, if you're more, you, 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 know, you learn from all my how to do the variation, how to look at technical analysis, then definitely you can go and do more advanced strategies on uh, option trading. Um, if you're very, very advanced, then I think that I think maybe you will already understand what I'm trying to say. Um, so the, the, I think the, the key, okay, sorry, one, two, three, right? So number one, understand what you're buying. <laughs> so too many things to share. Understand what you're buying. Number two, know when to get out this is the ultimate question you want to solve number two uh when to get out and number three um okay number three is can you hold on to it for long term if you can't hold on to it for long term maybe don't buy it okay maybe mm -hmm. don't buy it. Let's, let's just say that you know when to get in you know when to get out that's trading that's not investing right you, you know that oh this is the bottom of bitcoin uh, you, you look at the support and resistance, you go, yeah, support, you get our resistance, that's trading, but that's not investing. Mm, I see. So at the end of the day, it boils down to investing once again, investing in something that you understand and you're willing to actually invest for long term, right? Yep. And then at the same no time, you still need to have an exit plan, right? And not just buy and forget, but then buy and hold if you were to hold on to it because it still has value appreciation or maybe it gives you cash flow and there's no reason for exit. But then if it turns bad, then that's when you need to start thinking about it. 
right? So Hadi, oh my God, Hadi is here. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, Hadi, the, the seven-figure investor. Oh my God, Hadi is such a wow. great investor. I, I, I managed wow. to interview him, I think, last month, right? So guys, if you did not manage to catch the interview, you can uh, go to my YouTube channel and I had a very good uh, in-depth in discussion with Hadi and how his, his own journey has been as well as an investor to grow his portfolio to seven figure using uh, using options as well. All right. So in the meantime, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Kevin is saying that, oh, I want to get your book, Chloe. Okay. So then make sure all right, I, I feel motivated right now to start writing my book. You know, get to interview so many good investors. I need to compile all their wisdom. So I really am to have it by end of this year so do join my telegram channel so that you can stay up to date how you can get a copy of the book as well in the meantime all right uh we may also make sure to follow ken the safe investor because he also has a lot of a lot of uh options investment insights as well as even crypto investment insights as well so yeah so any any else that you want to highlight ken um you know before we wrap up this interview uh, maybe I'll just answer one more question. Uh, oh, thank you, Hadi. I, I'm, I'm so flattered because I'm learning, I, I'm getting the seven figure uh, investor. <laughs> Very, yeah, yeah, I really look up to you as well. Uh, let me just answer one more question. Um, precious metal, um, OD, right? Your precious metal, your question about yeah. precious metal. Um, you, okay, so I can't, I won't tell, I can't say buy or buy not, but not buy. But think about what contributes value and does it have value appreciation or does it have cash flow? Because my, for me, I don't buy it. Okay, but you need to think about you need to think about that. Hmm. All right. So all right, Yvonne, let's go Taiwan together. <laughs> Going there end of the year. All right. So once again, thank you everybody uh for coming here and and if you guys find this useful can you type ccc in the chat cap cap clap to ken and cap cap clap to i think every single one of you to choose to commit to your own learning and actually spend your evening together with us to keep on learning keep on surround yourself with the right mindset the right environment so that you can keep going in this investment to the right direction so that you can take it to the next level so with that all right do join us uh, in our own telegram channel the i think the link is all below uh, for me, it's Aligato Investor. For Ken, it's the Safe Investor. Just search the Telegram. You should be able to find us as well. So with that, see you guys next round and can't wait to really continue to make sure to continue to stay investor. I think right now the market, even though uh, it's slightly at the resistant area, but do observe a little bit. If you are afraid of entering options right now, just buy some shares, right? Or even selling some puts uh, because the valuation is so attractive, right? But if you do have a bigger portfolio and you actually can have multiple bullets to shoot, then you can consider entering maybe just one position. And if it drops furthermore, uh, enter a second position. Make sure you always get a longest uh, call option, right? If you are using strategy X. All right. So with that, thank you, everybody. And we will see you guys the next time. See you. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.